Welcome everyone to Microsoft Flight Simulator. Today we're going to be checking out and analysing actually the difference between Sim Update 4 and Sim Update 5 for us VR users. Now you may wonder why I didn't show you the frame rate counter on my initial test. I actually did that on purpose because a lot of people are getting too caught up with the actual frame rate numbers, but that only tells half the story. It's how it's perceived in the headset, how smooth it feels, and that's all about frame timing. As you can see here with this first test, in London City, we're getting about between 27 and 29 frames per second, but there's reds and yellows everywhere because basically the sim is choking and is struggling to maintain a decent level of smooth uh, frames. So that is the key here, really. A lot of people are worried because they're only getting five frames more or six frames more. It's actually more about the smoothness of the frame timing and the consistency of those frames that matters here. So of course, we're gonna do a test in London City. This is Sim Update 4 with the Just Flight Piper Warrior. Um, and I'm now gonna check out the exact same test in Sim Update 5. And I'm gonna show you my settings first. These settings are exactly the same for both tests, of course, using the very latest NVIDIA driver. Can't remember the name of it, but I'll put on the screen now what it is. <laughs> that is what I'm using. And I'm using 100% render scale on in the sim itself, and of course, 70% in OpenXR. Here we go then, let's try it out. Here's Sim Update 5. So straight away, if you wanna just look at the numbers, it's pretty obvious that we're about eight to 10 frames actually more as you'll see later on 36 frames per second whilst recording in london city it's never i've never heard of that before <laughs> but it's happening and that is absolutely incredible and this is what i'm talking about also there's lots of green we like green it's better than yellow it's definitely better than red that means the frame timing is actually very consistent we're getting smooth performance here over London and I'm just kind of moving around the views here panning around um, and of course I also want you to know that I'm using Nvidia Shadow Play which also kills a substantial amount of frames I'm able to easily reach 45 between 40 and 45 frames per second with these settings without recording so please keep that in mind as we're buzzing around here London but it's absolutely beautiful I am using a 10900K with an RTX 3090 and my performance is looking to be around 10 frames per second more, which I was not expecting. Anyway, we're gonna go for a landing here. Please get your landing ratings in now. And now we're gonna head to New York because that is another PC melter area. In fact, actually, I don't think it's as bad as London, personally, because for whatever reason, it seems to perform better. And we're also in the CRJ, which is pretty much an airliner. You know, it's not the Airbus of, you know, so I think the Airbuses and the Boeings do rob you of a few more frames, but I'm not an airliner guy. This is about as big as I go in terms of complexity in this sim. I, I'm more of a general aviation guy, to be honest. But as you can see here, we're getting about 25 frames per second, topping out at about 27, but it's really struggling there. And it's red and it's yellow again. And we don't like that color. It shows the frame timing isn't doing a very good job. Um, and a lot of that is just, it's not optimized in Sim Update 4. There's a huge difference there. Now, what you notice in the headset is a lot more than just those fancy numbers on the screen there, because it really feels smooth. It feels consistent. Everything doesn't feel um, as clunky, and the micro stutters, unless you're very close to the ground, are not really much of an issue here. So it's quite remarkable what a Sebu has achieved. Now, as you can see here, this is a full on, full fat photogrammetry area, okay? And we are flying really quite low here, particularly for an airliner. And, you know, we're still getting about 26, 27 frames per second. We go outside there as well. We're now going to do the exact same thing in Sim Update 5. So drum roll, please. Here we go. So straight away again, we're getting 37 frames per second whilst on the deck. So 
I can definitely tell on my system right now, I'm getting about a 10 frame rate difference in VR. That is exceptional. That's incredible. People, I mean, look at this. We're getting 43 frames per second here. That's even more. So I think it's very clear, even for high-end power users like me with the 3090 card, there's still quite a difference, more than I was expecting. And that first flight that I showed on the channel, where I was absolutely amazed, to the point where I had to re-record the audio because I was shouting too much, you know, I was definitely, what I was seeing with my eyes was absolutely a, a definite improvement. Now, some people are wanting sort of 60 frames in VR. That You can actually do that um, if you have a sort of a lower resolution headset. And... Uh, that is something that I've shown with the Pimax 5K Plus. You can get 60 frames per second in this sim with a low res resolution headset. So that is something to worth considering. But for me personally, I prefer high resolution. And as we fly past here, the Statue of Liberty, we're getting 45, sorry, 42 frames per second whilst recording. That's incredible. I'm now going to show you them both back to back so you can really see the difference. Particularly in London here, it's about 67 frames on the ground. And I hope you all are really enjoying this Sim Update 5. I think it's a massive achievement by Sabo. And yeah, I'll see you all again very soon. And by the way, if you're wondering, I haven't got on my motorcycle trip yet. The ferry got cancelled, but I'm going in a couple of days time and trying again. <laughs> see you all soon guys and thank you so much for your support and well wishes. Bye-bye for now.